Hello and welcome everyone. I know you've been waiting for me to continue with this advanced WordPress theme development series and like I said whenever I have time I'm gonna continue with this series. Okay so I've got some more episodes for you um, and this is gonna be since we are since you have been learning about Gutenberg uh, previously how to create Gutenberg patterns with that memory fresh in your mind we can continue further with setting up Gutenberg for block development because because as a theme developer there will be scenarios wherein you would need to develop custom blocks and the solutions that are available uh, on the internet like the plugins and libraries may not suffice your need you may have a custom design that the client wants you to build and at that time the knowledge of Gutenberg block development will definitely be useful so with that let's begin so what we're going to do is we'll go to our assets directory so I'm currently inside of my themes directory and I'm going to go into the assets and there are certain packages that we are going to download now before we I jump onto those packages uh, I just wanted to let you know that when you when you are developing custom blocks it is better to keep them in plugins compared to themes because in case if you change it to a diff different theme at least your block will still be available that you can reuse from one theme to another or from one website to another because it's just a plugin so it can be used anywhere yeah uh, however for the demonstration purposes for the tutorial purposes we are just going to do that inside of our theme but just letting you know that the best practice is to put that inside of a plugin and that's what WordPress org re recommends as well okay all right so just to let you know that if you did decide to do it the plugin way uh, the, the most recommended way for doing it is through at WordPress create block package so what this package does basically is it kind of generates the PHP JavaScript code and everything else you need to start the project so if you remember from the previous videos we have set up the webpack Babel and everything ourselves but if you were just developing Gutenberg blocks and if you were doing it the plugin way I would really recommend in fact WordPress also recommends you can see that it's officially supported way uh, I would recommend you to use the add WordPress create block and it's pretty simple to actually use that you can see that you know you can do npm in it uh, WordPress block and then the name of that particular uh, block and it's gonna create that in that directory with that particular name of the block and then you have a boilerplate to start with and it gives you a lot of other features like linting you can see that you have options to lint CSS, lint JS etc so many things uh, comes out of the box with this in fact you can directly uh, you know inst install it from the NPX also and then just npm run start and it's automatically going to start the development server for you and then you can continue with the block development so kind of creates all of the boilerplate stuff that you had to do it yourself okay all right so that's the plugin way of doing things uh, since we are doing it through the theme uh, then we can use the WordPress packages now there are certain packages we are going to be installing so I'm just going to copy it from here and then I'll tell you what all packages we have used so we're going to be using WordPress base style block editor blocks components compose data element hooks i18n for internationalization for icons we're using WordPress icons for server-side rendered block we're using server-side render and then there's also a dependency extraction plugin that we are using and I'm going to tell you in a moment why okay and then I'm also going to be using the ESLint plugin which we're going to use it in some time and then we're using Lodash as well now there will be some questions why we are using Lodash why we're using dependency extract plugin so I'm going to tell you that in a moment so let's start with the dependency extraction webpack plugin first okay so let it install and in the meanwhile we will start exploring and understanding what this actually does okay so let's find out first uh, before talking about it as to how does uh, WordPress actually imports all of these packages so I'm gonna go to bookmarks core blocks 
So if you want to know what are the different code blocks that are available, you can directly go to the WordPress Gutenberg and then inside of this you have the packages, block library and source. Take a look at this button. You can pull all of the methods from the WP object as well which is available to you. However, if you check how the Gutenberg is doing it, as you can see it's actually importing these methods like use state, use callback, uh, all of these components from the packages. Now the beauty of these packages is, is that is that you can actually develop blocks outside WordPress as well because these are just packages available from NPM. Of course there could be certain things that might not be available that is only available in WordPress but you can at least build your components. If not blocks you can build your components outside of WordPress environment which could be even faster way of developing it because then you can take advantage of uh, the hot reloading and stuff yeah hot reloading look like the browser refresh that happens automatically and stuff like that yep okay so let's take a look what this dependency extraction webpack plugin does so it has two purposes it has externalized dependencies that are available as script dependencies on modern WordPress website and it adds an asset file for each entry so I'm going to show you about that asset file and how that is useful to us but if you notice I'm installing Lodash right now, Lodash is already available uh, you know in WordPress so why why am I even doing that so there is a reason for that so if you notice in the WordPress core uh, Gutenberg core it is pulling all of the methods of Lodash from the Lodash npm package right if we check their package.json take a look lodash lodash you can see it's been installed as a package so why is that if it's already available uh, to us uh, and we can include that as dependency just like jquery uh, or underscore why can't we just use this so there is some discussion that has happened on stack overflow about that which I'll like to take you to and then I'll explain to you what that means so people have raised questions that you know uh, do we need Lodash as a dependency in Gutenberg plugin so what people recommended is to use it like this uh, the way WordPress core does it and why because the problem is that the Lodash isn't a script dependency it's an NPM dependency so when we are running the webpack and Babel we uh, it doesn't have any idea about this Lodash, right? So it needs to be installed as a dependency. So you can't enqueue in this way and expect your application to build. And it may be available in the WordPress admin, but Webpack runs in Node CLI context and it doesn't know what you know what Lodash it is, like I explained to you, right? So that is why we are installing it as an npm package, okay? And that way the Webpack and Babel will know about this Lodash. But wait a minute, does that not mean that we are going to be, you know, doing it twice? Because uh, if WordPress already has it, and then I'm again including that as a dependency, okay, like at even the dev dependency, then does that not mean that it's going to be included twice? Good question. So let's see how our plugin solves that, right? So this dependency extraction webpack plugin is absolutely amazing. What what it does is that it's going to find out whether or not those packages that you have installed via npm already exist in WordPress or not if it exists then it's going to eventually use that so you don't have to worry about anything okay so this is what it says over here this allows JavaScript bundles produced by webpack to leverage WordPress style dependency sharing without having an error prone process of manually maintaining the dependency list right so which means that you can continue to install the packages that you want and then uh, this is going to take care of managing all of the dependencies and extracting them from, uh, for you from WordPress anyways. And I'm going to show you that in a moment how that, that works. Okay. Awesome. So probably that would probably be in the next video because when it generates uh, all the required dependency as, as in when you include those, uh, as in when you import those uh, things. Uh, using add import statement is going to automatically add to that assets uh, file assets.php so you don't have to do you don't have to maintain things manually okay so I think by this time it's already installed which is great 
Okay, uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is basically I'm going to I'm going to configure the dependency extract plugin. So what I'll do is I'll go to assets source and I'll, I'll go to assets and then webpack config and then I'm going to use it like so. Okay, so I'm going to require it. Once that is done, I'm going to ensure that I will include it as a plugin over here, like the other ones. Oops. And then I'm going to pass some of the options like inject polyfill equals true. And then also we are going to be combining assets. So So you can see what this does. If this is set to true, by default one asset is created for each entry point. However, when this flag is set to true, all the information about the asset is combined into a single asset dot json or asset dot php file in our case we are going to use the assets dot uh, php because we are going to use that as a dependency while enqueuing our script so when we are enqueuing the script you will need to have that as an array in php okay so i'm going to set that to true for combining all of the assets so let's set that to true and that's that next thing i'm going to do is I'll also create a entry point for blocks because I will be using block.js and block.css so that our editor our block related JavaScript and CSS can be included uh, wherever we need to like in the editor and in the front end okay so let's continue so all we have to do now is just go to our JS, create a file called blocks.js and then in the SAS file we also create a file called oops blocks.scss. Okay, and then we're going to ensure that we import SAS block.scss so that it can create a block dot uh, CSS file when we bundle it okay awesome and now we're just going to ensure that we will create a constant so we have the build URI we don't have the build path so I'm just going to paste that here so this is going to be creating a constant called Aquila build path and it's going to give me the the build path which is the absolute path up until the builds directory because we're going to be needing that to enqueue our styles and scripts okay so all we have to do now is just enqueue our styles and scripts so all i'm going to do is just go to includes classes and then i'm going to go to the assets because that's where we have included all of our styles and scripts And then I'm going to add an action over here, which is this, uh, which will be NQ block assets. Okay, so how do we actually. <clears throat> now the question comes that how do we actually NQ the styles and scripts for the Gutenberg blocks? Because I can understand I can do N WP NQ scripts. Uh, you know for registering the styles and scripts on the front end and I can also do the admin NQ scripts and I can also use the hook called admin NQ scripts to include my styles and scripts for the uh, back end but that's not what we want what we really want is that I want those styles to be only applied to the editor and not like everywhere right